By the 12th day, Geronimo has turned into quite the predator. Even the fastest can't survive. We're gonna need a bigger dish. I couldn't keep the larvae in the little dishes forever, so I got an aquarium that I dedicate specifically to the tadpoles. To keep the water clean, I used a sponge filter and a special super fine sponge to make sure the larvae didn't get sucked up. I even got a super double sponge, but in the end, it was kind of clunky, so I set it aside. Now I'm running this filter in the main terrarium to impregnate the sponge with bacteria and get things seeded. Over here is the new tadpole tank. This is one of the plants from the old terrarium. The idea is to seed the tank again. This is a nano heater. It is set fixed at 25 degrees. Can't change it. And once we get the filter impregnated or kind of inoculated, we'll install it here. With the new aquarium prepared, I set it aside so it could acclimate and build up the necessary bacteria to keep the water clean. In the meantime, eggs are hatching and larvae are growing. One of the things that's really obvious on the underside of the larvae is a little black dot. This is the spiraculum that the larvae use to breathe the water out that they breathe in through their mouth. You can see this really clearly in the side view where it's just in front of the gut that still contains yolk. 13 days into this, batch two are now eight days old, and our very first tadpole, Geronimo, is about halfway done. Even though the Artemia or brine shrimp are super easy to hatch in salt water, I find it almost impossible to get them to grow any bigger than these tiny hatchling nauplii. But that's okay, because they're at their most nutritious just after they've emerged, and they're still full of yolk. But of course, tadpoles don't live on food alone. They need super clean water. And to keep this water clean, in these little dishes, I have to change it many times per day. After a bit of trial and error, I find what works absolute best is a clear turkey baster. This way I can suck up any water, clean out any waste, but still be sure that I don't accidentally grab any tadpoles. Two weeks into this project and I'm starting to get the swing of things. This morning, there's even a batch of hundreds of new eggs. They seem like they're developing right before my eyes. I don't know what's causing so much egg laying right now. Maybe it's the food or maybe it's the time of year. Whatever it is, there's no question that I now have a fully certified frog nursery. All the way back to two weeks ago when I got the very first eggs, I still got Geronimo. Two weeks old and he's getting bigger every day. And then over here, I've got batches two, three, and four. Even though there's a four day age difference, I'm hoping that won't be a problem. Batch five is just a little bit behind, but they're starting to swim, so they're in a separate container. And of course, the same goes for the eggs that were laid just this morning. So far, I'm still keeping all the larvae floating in the main pond. When I need more space, I can easily move them out to the aquarium I already prepared. But for now, they stay in the pond. After all, this is the way it would be in nature anyway. They just wouldn't be protected from the adults. I feel so encouraged, I decide to throw in some live tube effects just to see what would happen. The next morning, the tube effects are still there, but something else is missing. You see, I decided to combine all of the larvae into one container. I was feeling so encouraged, I thought that the small ones could easily outrun the large ones. Well, I was wrong. It looks like the three-day-old larvae are just no match for the two-week-old tadpole. 
It was as if Batch 5 simply never existed. But clearly, the largest larva simply consumed its siblings. Of course, this is why the frogs lay so many eggs in the first place. So many risks in life, very few actually make it to adulthood. But keeping in mind that I expected no larvae to survive at all, I'm extremely proud of how things are going so far. And just today, a couple of days later, batch 6 larvae are up and swimming. There are no more losses at all, and in fact, I start offering tube effects worms. Geronimo is getting so big, he's definitely interested in the worms, but he just doesn't seem to know what to do with them yet. It's a bit like how things were in the beginning, when Geronimo was very interested in the Artemia, but he just didn't seem to know how to hunt them correctly. Now technically, all the frogs in the family Pippity are called tongueless frogs. What that has to do with the tadpoles, I'm not sure. They definitely have a tube-like mouth, and when they feed, they open it all of a sudden, contract their gut, and suck in anything that's in the surrounding water. And while little things like Artemia don't stand a chance, the longer tube effects seem to pose a little bit more of a problem. They seem to get them in the mouth, but they just can't get them all the way into the stomach. It seems like there's so much to learn from observing these, I spend hours just checking them out and watching what they do. The skin is so thin you can even see the heartbeat. I'm kind of getting the feeling that maybe these tube effects are too large, so I try some white worms instead. The larvae give it their best attempts, but they're also a little bit too big to swallow. Even the smallest larvae try to attack the worms but they don't really stand a chance of swallowing them all. We're up to day 18 now, and Geronimo is now starting to develop little legs. He doesn't really bend them or swim with them much, but they're definitely forming little tiny toes and little feet. If you think about how complex these structures are, it's nothing short of incredible how these develop in such a short time. And with some luck, in just a few weeks, it'll emerge as a small version of the adult frogs. Sometimes people confuse clawed frogs with dwarf African clawed frogs, but unlike the bigger ones, the small dwarf African clawed frogs have webbed front feet. It's now day 20, and Geronimo's turned into a tadpole hunting machine. With his bigger mass and bigger bulk, that means he's got a bigger mouth, which means bigger food, eating more often, and overall developing faster. The development is happening so fast now that you can see changes even in the course of a day. In the morning, he was starting to develop knees, and by late afternoon, the toes and fingers were becoming even more defined. There were even bulges in the front where the future front legs would start to emerge. And by evening, the front legs were starting to appear. But unlike the hind legs, which came in completely symmetrically, the front legs appeared one at a time. It was almost as if they burst out from underneath the skin. And by the end of the day, you could even see little fingers developing. 